We have been talking about the dominion of God's kingdom and accessing that dominion is accessing um, the conversation of God's life. And we said that the dominion of God, the first dominion in the kingdom of God is the kingdom of Christ. Can we all say that? And the kingdom of God is the kingdom of Christ. So you can access the dominion of God that is everlasting and also peeks into an eternal dominion without first accessing the kingdom of Christ. Now you can see Ephesians chapter 5. Let's see that briefly. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5. Um, I think, um, I don't know, I think it was Mommy or Pastor Maker. Can we, oh, well, hallelujah, I just went into the ministration. Mommy, I'm very sorry. I was told I, was, I, I had just 30 minutes. Can we appreciate our Mommy? Mommy, thank you so much, Ma. Lord, I'm, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much, Mommy, for blessing us today. And you always being a blessing to us all the time. Thank you, Ma. We are grateful, Ma. I want to greet all the ministers. I'm sorry. I, 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 I breached protocol. I'm very sorry about that. I greet all the ministers. Uh, Daddy in absentia. Can we appreciate God's servant? Um, he's going to join us in a moment. Um, I also want to say I um, uh, appreciate God's servant, Pastor Maker Egushuku in absentia. I'm sure he's going to join us. Can we appreciate Pastor Maker? Uh, Mommy Lillian, thank you. You have been seated. Can we appreciate Mommy Lillian Egushuku? Thank you so much, Ma. And I want to appreciate all the ministers, Pastor Hans and the wives, Pastor Kadian, Pastor Uzo, Pastor Lami Kora, Daddy Lami Kora, Pastor Azuka. Can we, no, let's, let's clap. Amen. I appreciate you all, Pastor Dodi and your wives. I'm not so good in greeting, you know. Uh, I trust God that I'm going to uh, meet Daddy stature. Amen. Amen. I, I'm really trusting God for that. I'm not so good. And I want to appreciate my wife also. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, so like we said, um, the kingdom of Christ is the first dominion um, in the kingdom of God. So it is actually the kingdom of Christ and God. So the kingdom of God is an heavenly kingdom. By an heavenly kingdom, we need an heavenly dominion. An heavenly conversation of life. So when we say dominion, what we mean is actually a conversation of life. What did I say dominion is? Conversation of life. That's just simplifying dominion. <clears throat> so actually, the Lord our God, God created um, creation at different strata's of dominion. First, from the present creation, beginning from the, um, the heavenly realm down to the earth, God brought forth creation at several stratas of dominion. Angels are in their different stratas of dominion. They are dominion entities. And they all dwell in their different um, kingdoms, carrying their unique conversations. Can we say amen? amen. So you know an angel by his conversation. So a cherubim is a is an entity of glory Amen. or a being that has a conversation of glory. So when you say somebody is a, 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 an angel is a cherub, what cherubs um, carry within themselves is a glorious conversation. Hallelujah. And it is the highest conversation in the present. Can we say amen? amen. So at each level of angelic strata, we have several degrees of conversation onto the realm of the living soul. So when God created man, God put man in his what? In his dominion, as the dominion of a living soul. Hallelujah. Amen. However, the calling of God for man was that man will come into his own dominion, which is an everlasting dominion. Can we say amen? amen. A four time God has called man to come to um, answer the call of an heavenly dominion. That's the calling for man. Hallelujah. So God, um, through our Lord Jesus Christ, um, is reintroducing the old... Can we appreciate God's servant? Thank you so much, Daddy. Amen. God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, is um, summoning man into the original calling of God for man before time began. Can we say amen? amen. Now, let's quickly see that in um, Titus chapter 1. I'll come back here briefly. Uh, Titus chapter 1 from verse 1. Amen. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect 
and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness in the hope of eternal life which God that what cannot lie promised before what the world began so the um, original dominion in God is the dominion of eternal life and that is the promise of God to man can we say amen so this has been God's program all along. And so even after God put a man, when God created the first man and put him in the garden, what God had in mind was that the living soul man will journey through seasons of understanding of God's ways until he came into the full dominion of God. Can we say amen? That plan is still the original plan of God for man. Jesus only came to um, reintroduce it to us. Can we say amen? amen? So, like I said, Christ is the first dominion of God. We cannot access the dominion of God without the dominion of Christ. So, let's see Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5. For this we know that no what? Or monger, nor an unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, at any inheritance in what? The kingdom of Christ and God. So we understand that each of those kingdoms also have their inheritance. So there is a type of an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. Can we say amen? amen. And that inheritance is the dominion of peace. The peace of Christ is the dominion of the kingdom of Christ. What did I say? The peace of Christ is the dominion of the kingdom of Christ. The reason why is that it is at that dominion of peace that you can access the judgments of God. The judgments of God can only be accessible to men that have perfected the conversation of peace. So it is those that are in that dominion of peace that the book of judgment of God can be opened up to. Can we say amen? amen. You cannot come into the inheritance of God without the books of God being open. The books of God, they are the books that contain the record of God's righteousness. Amen. Righteousness cannot be revealed except books are open. What did I say? So, books needs to be open for judgment to be given to us. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I just had in my spirit. Let's see Daniel 7. I'll still go back to um, uh, Colossians 1. Quickly, Daniel 7 verse 9. I know God's servant has been teaching around the book of Daniel. Um, so, I know that this um, is a present um, burden in the heart of God to open this book. I believe so. Can we say Amen. So I beheld till thrones were cast down, and the ancients of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the air of his head like pure wool. And his throne was like the fairy flame, and the wheels as burning fire. Verse 10, please. Um, a fire stream issued and came forth from him. Before him, thousand, thousand, thousands ministered unto him. And ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Can we say amen? amen? Then what the judgment was said. So we have two categories of um, ministering, you know, in chapter uh, verse 10. We have those that are ministers and those that are servants. Can we say amen? amen. Um, servants are those that are finished the works of Christ and are in the dominion of peace to receive the judgments of God. So for you to be a qualified as a minister um, to, or a servant to God, that's what Romans chapter 6 called it, servant to God. It means that you have done, you have done obedience to the revealed righteousness in Christ. Can we say amen? amen. You must have obeyed the Tent of righteousness to cry or in Christ to be called a servant of Christ or a servant to God. So a servant of Christ 
Another word for a servant of Christ is a servant to God. Meaning, he is called to serve God. Hallelujah. So, it is out of the company of Christ that they get servants of God. So, you can't serve God except you have done pleasure in the dominion of Christ. And you will do pleasure until you arrive at peace. So, those that are at peace are now those that receive judgment to possess the kingdom. And for judgment to be given, books will be open. So you see there it says, the judgment was set. And what? The books were what? They were opened. So these books are books that have the revelations of everlasting righteousness or everlasting works. Works that must be done to now please God. Can we say amen? Amen. Now look at verse 11. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words um, which the aunt spake. And I beheld even till the beast was slain and the body destroyed and given to the flame. I want you to take me to the verse because of time when it says, And the saints of the most high possess the kingdom. Just take me there quickly. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, until the ancient of this came and judgment was given. This is where I'm going. Judgment was given to what? To the saints of the Most High. Hallelujah. So this judgment that was given was actually understanding. It was understanding of the content of life or the ways that are in God. God's dominion is revealed in judgment. Hallelujah. What did I say? So when you will, if you are going to come into an everlasting dominion, you must be coming into seasons of judgment from God. So these books are what I am interested in. Now, books are necessary. uh, If books are not open, understanding cannot be opened. Now, I now found out that the spirit that we are warring with is a fallen book. You see, all the spirits in the air. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we say amen? Amen. All the spirits, they are all books. Satan is a falling book. And books are times of prophecy. What What is contained in a book is a prophetic manual. Or it's a prophetic script for living. So when you say a book, a book has things written for you to fulfill. Amen. Amen. So you cannot come into the dominion of God. The dominion of God is actually a prophecy. It's a prophecy of God for man. God has ordained that man will prophesy him. To prophesy him is to be a witness. Can we say amen? So we have two seasons. We have the book of God that must open up judgment to us so that we can become God's prophets. A prophet of God is those that are bearing witness to the judgments of God. It will take a prophet of God to wage war against the adversary. Satan is a fallen prophet. Yes. Uh, the, when you see all oh, that old serpent in scripture, that old serpent is actually a prophet. He's a, he's a fallen prophet of God's ways. He's an ancient prophet. So I like the word he said, until the ancient of days sat. So, you know, we need ancientcy to deal with the fallen ancient prophet. Can we say Amen. Meaning this book has wisdom to reconcile for iniquity. Yeah. Wisdom. Now, take amen. Can we say amen? amen? Daniel chapter 9. Let me just stay within the scope of the book of Daniel. Just Daniel chapter 9. Thank you. Um, it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Amen. So am I simple? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I don't know why I'm wired this way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm not trying to be caught. I'm just wired this way. Amen. God will help me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Maker. Well. I'm doing well. Okay. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we say amen? amen? 
So 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to what? Finish the transgression and to make what? An end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity. So what you see here is the measurement of the tabernacle. Okay, so you can see that it is the last cut is for reconciliation or for iniquity. But before you reconcile for iniquity, you must have what? Finished transgression and make an end of what? Of sin. So, for you to be a servant of Christ, you must have made an end of sins. To make an end of sin means that you have also prophesied a little book or a minor book. God told me that Christ are minor prophets. And another word for them from scripture are anointed ones. So when you say somebody is anointed, that anointing is not anointing upon alone. An anointed man is someone that has done the righteousness in Christ and he has been set apart for glory. So you will see scripture talk about touch not my anointed. So the first dominion of the kingdom is the dominion of anointed ones. Those anointed ones, they are Christ. They must have done obedience to... There's also a prophetic manual to raise Christ. It is called the testimony of Christ. And so you cannot access a higher testament that is supposed to raise a prophet of God except you have done... That which can make you anointed. So another word for a Christ is an anointed one. Can we say amen? amen. And it takes leading to raise anointed ones. Yes, leading of the spirit there is by revelation of righteousness. We are led by revealed righteousness. Yes. That's how they, they lead us. They lead us by amen. amen. By revelation of righteousness. It's righteousness revealed and righteousness obeyed that makes you an anointed one. You are anointed to the degree of your obedience. Amen. So if you see, I, I, I believe that God is raising out of us a company of anointed ones and prophets. Can we say amen? amen. Those are measurements to deal with spirits. Yeah. Spirits of darkness and spirits of wickedness. So, reconciliation, to make reconciliation for iniquity. Is why we need books to be opened. So you see this iniquity is Satan himself wants to finish the temple of sin. I don't know who was saying it. I, I cannot remember. I think it was daddy that said that the spirits have been warring or they have been trying to perfect the program of iniquity. But they have not finished that assignment since. You know that we still have not come into the era where iniquity has been perfected in man. And Satan has been warring since, but he has not done that. But we understand that the highest plan of wicked spirits is to finish the temple of iniquity in man. Meaning man will become a prophet of sin. You see, when they say somebody is a man of sin, a man of sin is a building of sin. So, meaning that it's not just God that wants to build. Can we say amen? God is interested in our building. It is our building that is our formation against the spirits of wickedness, oppression of iniquity. But the enemy also, also wants to do what? He also wants to build men. Can we say amen? When he says somebody is a man of sin, a man of sin is a false prophet. When it says a prophet of sin. A prophet of sin is someone that has finished iniquity and he has become useless to God. God's highest purpose for us is that we do obedience in the body. Yes. Satan's highest objective is for you to finish iniquity in the same body so that man will become useless to God. Can we say amen? So I'm just showing you the program of God. So books must be opened. These books, they are to bring the exercise of God's wisdom to us. 
So inside those books are ways of God that when they are done, we come into the stature of God that can resist iniquity. Can we say amen? Let's look at, look at Revelation 20. Hallelujah. I ju I'm just following my spirit. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Yes, amen. Now look at this. Thank you. So I saw, and I saw the dead. It took God's servant to interpret this. You know, we have read this for years. Uh, we didn't know what it was. He said, I saw the dead, small and what? Great, stand before God. So we have men in different categories of death. Small death and great death. Okay? So these are, these are souls of men in their different, uh, in their different responses to death. So we have men that have died a small death in their soul. And then we have those that will not die a small death. They will go further to die a great death. So now the essence of the revelation of Christ, because you see, to counter small death, you need Christ. That is what you need Christ for. So when you see that somebody is an anointed one or a Christ, he's an overcomer of small death. And then when you now raise a prophet of God, a prophet of God is formidable against great death. Yes. You see, this great death is the program of God, is the program of the enemy for the last time. Our salvation is the program of God for the last time. Can we say amen? amen. So he said, I saw both uh, small and great stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life and the dead were judged according to those things which were written in the books and according to what their work so uh, i like the word they were judged according to things written in the book so there are things written can we say amen the things written in the book are the prophetic scripts of god that we are supposed to live by now look at psalm 40 psalm 40 says that um in sacrifices and in burnt offering. Now, let's look at Psalm 40, verse, is it 6 or 7? Um, Psalm 40, thank you. Just let me check that scripture. Thank you. Sacrifices and offering thou didst not desire. My ears thou hast opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Verse 7. Then I said, Lo, I come in the what? Volume of book, it is written of me. I like the word written. So there are things written. Those things written are ordained programs of God for man. So we have a book written for man to become Christ. So if you see a spiritual man or someone in the dominion of Christ is fulfilling a written book. It is, it, is, it is living according to a script that has been written. But the highest script that has been written for men is for man to what? Be grown up as a stature of righteousness in the earth. So this is not just written for Jesus. Can we say amen? When you say written, it's not just talking about things I will do here, I will marry, I will do ministry. No. There are things that God has written for man in accordance to the promise of God for man. And everyone has an appointment with this book. Can we say amen? Without this book opened, we cannot fulfill the highest pleasure of God for man. You cannot please God until books of God's judgment are open to you. As far as I'm concerned, everybody should be racing in their work with God to come to a place where the books of God will be open amen. concerning us. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then I said, Lo, I, I come in the volume of the book. It is what? Written of me. So this is a book of the testimony of Jesus. You see, inside this book is the wisdom to live out life as ordained by God. When we begin to live out life as ordained by God, we are taking prophetic steps Amen. in the spirit. Prophets are those that are, have the wisdom to crush the head of the adversary. They do that by fulfilling God. You know, what I found out is that by just pleasing God and obeying righteousness, we are crushing spirits. Hallelujah. That's how you, you break the code of wickedness. 
It is by the revelation of righteousness from this book. So I like this, the concept of the fact that all of us must come into a season when we are conscious of things that are written in the book of God. Can we say amen? amen. So books are opened for will of God to be revealed. The temple of God, amen, take me to, finally, take me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, quickly. Uh, let me just try to tie my thoughts. I'm not sure if 30 minutes is enough. Can we say amen? Let's say amen. Take me to verse, um, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, not Psalm, well, not first Samuel. So the, the teaching or the wisdom of the doctrine of Christ is to raise a temple of Christ. A temple of Christ is a man that is against the temple of this world. This world is also a temple. Yeah. Why is it a temple? Man, this world, this world raises worshippers. Yes. That the, what this world teaches is worship. So because of that, the world is a, is a kind of a temple. And if you want to overcome worship of this world, what you need is the temple of Christ. Uh, you see, that temple of Christ is a measurement of wisdom that can break worship. So naturally, men, we worship the world, except they are built with a wisdom that can break worship or the code of worship to the world. Can we say amen? So when you see a Christ, a Christ temple is a temple against worship of this world. Can we say amen? amen. We see that in Ephesians chapter 2, okay, that there are two seasons of building. They will first build you first as a temple of Christ. And when they build as a temple of Christ, you cannot break worship of the world. Can we say amen? Ever, God's mind is to make us a temple of God. Amen. The formation of wisdom of the temple of God is to be able to break spirits of wickedness. Uh, when you say wickedness uh, or iniquity, it actually is the, um, how will I put it? It's the perversion of God's will for man. Iniquity is the opposite of God's wisdom for man. Iniquity is actually inequity. Meaning God's, the life that God has prescribed for man is a life of equity. When you say something is equity, it is as high as, is, as it is, it is, how would I put it? It is a life that is balanced. Quickly take, let me explain that. Ephesians 3, quickly. Ephesians 3 verse 18. It as it is equal in all sides. Now take me from verse, is it verse 17? Because you know the city of God is built like that. It's equal. And that's, a, that, that's not just natural numbers. It's the measurement of God's life for man. It says that he will grant you according to the riches of the glory to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell first in your heart by faith. He will be rooted and grounded in love. Can we say amen? amen? So this is a man of Christ or a temple of Christ. Christ is dwelling in your heart by faith and then you are now rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. Okay? Now that now gives you foundation, amen, to be able to comprehend with what? All saints. You see all these saints are not every saint. They are saints that are transiting from the era of Christ into the era of what? Of God. Can we say amen? He says, to be able to come in with all saints, what is what? The breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. You see, this is actually equity. Equity is the revelation of the love of God. It is the wisdom of God for living. It is, it is breadth is the same as the length. The length is the same as the depth. The depth is the same as the height. Can we say Amen. We see that in the city of God, in Revelation chapter 21, that the city is as high as it's as, it's as long as it's as wide. So iniquity is the, 
is the breaking down, is the perversion of the revelation of God's love for man. It is a perverted script. That's why iniquity does not look like iniquity if God does not shine light. Yes. It looks like a life that it has a lot of promises. So it will take those that are receiving judgment of God to be able to know what iniquity is. And we say amen. Those that are receiving the judgment of God are those that are being raised as his temple. The temple of God is the house that has the revealed righteousness in God that can withstand iniquity. Iniquity is, the, is going to be a strong tide in these last days. Can we say amen? amen? It's going to be a tide where you will need so much light of God to be able to cite what it is. John, Paul, in, round, in rounding up, Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he says the mystery of iniquity is already at work. So we not understand that we're in that season of the last time where iniquity is already um, the, a mystery to make man finish sin eh, is already at work. That thing cannot be known except God opens the book of judgment. What can counter that operation in man? It will take a wisdom of God inside man. And that wisdom is to raise us as a temple. The temple of God is a house of God's wisdom that can be formidable against the perversion of the adversary. So we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, let's just round it up there. We see from verse 16, it says, What agreement had the temple of God with idols? Um, for ye are the temple of what? The living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them, I will walk in them, I will be what? They are God. Can we say amen? And they shall be what? My people. So a temple of God are those that are housing God. Eh? Now, before they get there, verse 17, they will, it says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. So the first season is to separate you from the world. Can we say amen? Uh, this is what the wisdom of Christ does. It's to separate us from the world because Christ has been made wisdom. Christ has been made what? Sanctification. Christ has been made what? Redemption. Christ is also righteousness. Everything in Christ is supposed to separate you from the world. Uh, so it says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye what? Separate, saith the Lord. And then what? Touch not the unclean thing, and I will what? I will receive you. Um, the unclean thing is not unclean things, it's the unclean thing. This is the world. Can we say amen? So there will be a, another instruction not to touch the world, lest you be defiled. Now look at verse 18. It now says, and I will be what? A father unto you. So God will not father those that are touching the world. They must be separate from the world and they must be giving wisdom not to touch the unclean thing. Then I will be a father unto you and you shall be what? My sons and daughters, say it who? The Lord Almighty. So the final season of building is now to make us what? Now, verse 16 now says, What agreement has the temple of God with hide us? For ye are the temple of the living God. For God had said. So this is the fi final season. We will be first separated by the sayings of the Lord. Can we say amen? amen. That will be made formidable not to touch the unclean thing. Uh, by the saints of the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. But we are to now come into the final season of building, which is to make us a temple of God. The temple of God is a man that because of righteousness obeyed, they have been able to trap God's way. So God says, I will dwell in them. God is not just going to dwell in them. God will also what? walk in them. So, if God will dwell in them. God will also what? Walk in them. And then I will now what? Be their God. And they shall be my people. So, these people of God are those that have fulfilled what is written in the book of God. Judgment of God was opened unto them. Judgment will be opened unto us, but we will not just receive this judgment. We will obey them. Can we say Amen. You can receive judgments and not do them. But if these judgments are done, eh, they will make us formidable against iniquity. 
Iniquity is going to be judged in these last days. Can we say amen? amen? Because God is raising a company of prophets. Those prophets are those that have the wisdom to live as God has ordained for man. And they'll be the one that will now house the glory of God in, the, in, their, in their flesh. They will trap glory conversation. Uh, the presence of God will become habitual to men. These men are those that have received wisdom from God's book. Can we say amen? I believe in my heart that God, um, in this conference, is going to crown our blessing. I just trust that in this last session that God will bring so much blessing to us. Can we lift up our hands and just begin to thank the Lord?